having Picasso, I guess, as a sort of a mentor, if you like. Uh, everybody has had Picasso as a mentor at some stage, I'm sure. But um, the idea of um, constantly changing and shifting and pushing yourself. Um, and that's what this show needed to be for me. So it mm. really scared me, this show. So, yeah. yeah. And um, talking about, you mentioned colour. Yes, you know, there's some of the interesting colours, that sort of yeah. copper-based, uh, you know, bluey green. That's right. And so do you want to talk to the yeah, listeners sure. that, about, about some of the, the yeah. coloration you use? Yeah, well, that those colours that I use, that sort of verdigris sort of colour um, in one of the images is sort of to represent the copper that I'm using and how over time some of these um, statues and... Um, and architecture and those sorts of things turn a certain greenish colour and um, it gives it a sense of metal, if you like, and, mm. and it's really malleable and, um, and can be pushed around. So hopefully that comes through on the image. And then some of the others I've used colours like um, sanguine colours, colours of blood and earth. And so you mm. get this combination of the goddess appearing from the earth, returning to the earth, the, the blood going through. And um, so the sanguine, which is a really beautiful, rich French ink, and um, really dense, and so I was able to push that through. So, um, and then other times, the really uh, in, in the most um, iconic image, I guess, in the show, Athena's just in 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 a, in a black and white sort of image, really stark, and really trying to make her look like a logo, if you like, because she's you know, and the images are big; they're not like uh, some of the dry points are um, are intimate, but a lot of the dry points in this show are quite large, I guess, four dry point plates. Mm. Um, some of them are, you know, around uh, 800 by 900 centimetres, which is quite large for a dry point, I guess. Mm. Um, and so the colours were chosen to create a certain feeling. And hopefully some of the images, for instance, resonate um, in a sort of a, a memory because we all have a memory of these things. You know, we go to the Metropolitan Museum and we um, have a memory of what it felt like to be in there. And we don't remember necessarily all the different things that we saw in there, but we have a feeling and a memory. And um, uh, in those places too, time and space seems to be locked into a vacuum and you always end up, uh, mm -hmm. Deborah and I always end up leaving the place um, exhausted and mentally fatigued. And then we, we, we go back again. So we spent um, the mm. Mets open till late evening. So we would spend our evenings at the Met after spending the day doing the daytime stuff. We would then, mm. uh, you know, spend the evenings at the Met um, uh, until very late. And, ah. um, and and also the idea too, we, some of the some of the images in the show have um, uh, followed through on the postcard images. So I think... Um, you, yes, this is what I want to yeah. next talk about. Uh, the next sort of series of things, was, which was this um, mixed media. Like That's you right. had, you have all these postcards. That's right. Uh, then they're framed. So on the most basic level, you yeah. would say before going into detail, they are old postcards yep. arranged by you and framed. Exactly. They are, um, some of them date back to 1890. Um, and some of them, uh, so most of them were picked up in New York at flea markets. And um, I mean, the show's called New York Found, and it's about, you know, the inspiration that I found in New York, but also objects like envelopes and mm. postcards that I found in New York. And um, the postcards themselves was a series that I started a few years ago now. And the idea that when people do go to these museums, sometimes they'll go into the postcard area of the, sh the gift shop <laughs> before they go and see the work. Yes. And sometimes they don't even see the things that, you know, they've got the postcard for. They just want to get a postcard. Yes. And so I like the idea of beginning with the postcard as a canvas mm. um, and, and then to build on that. So, so a, a lot of the images, uh, the postcards were laid out on the studio floor. As I painted other things, they were collecting paint and drips and uh, I was trying to Im embed them with my own history. Mm. And a lot of them came with me um, to the museum itself where I was drawing straight on from Athena and uh, uh, Marcus Aurelius, all these sort of classical images over the top of the postcard. So using the postcard as a canvas. Mm. Um, and also some of them have these fantastic little stories. So someone in the 1890s went and visited something and, and wrote back to the person in New York. So they all have these beautiful stories locked within the postcard. So you get this sort of time capsule. And, and they're all framed. Some of them have 100 postcards in one frame. Mm. And they're framed in a sort of a, a mosaic or a, a tapestry style so that you get this sense of it being um, a historical tablet, if you like, and um, containing everything from popular culture. So one of the postcards actually has Clint Eastwood uh, um, drawn in it. And combining that with really classical, uh, deeply meaningful images of um, classical gods. Um, some of the postcards are personal to me. So some of them have been sent to me. Some of them have been um, uh, given to me. And most of them were purchased in New York. So they had these beautiful um, stamps on them. 
Mm. And um, uh, which, of course, with emails, uh, is 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 becoming yes. an, his, uh, an historical artifact. Yeah. Because, uh, uh, yes, exactly. We send so many things by email, email. these days. Yes. Yeah, and and it's become a lost art, hasn't it? And um, uh, I, I I guess in a way that plays with the idea of the artifact and the modern artifact and the postcard is a um, a lost um, artifact and they're framed in a very deep box frame which could be seen flat. You could put this frame on your table and look down on it and it would still work. So they're mm -hmm. kind of framed the same way you would um, see them in a museum. So they're really deeply set within a box frame, mm. um, which hopefully gives them uh, another point of interest. And, um, and then, of course, there was the envelope, uh, the box of envelopes that I found, the bag of envelopes that I found on Fifth Avenue that kind of relate to that as well. Mm. Yes, that was, that was funny. Do you want to tell that story? Yeah, sure, sure. And then we might pay, just as a break, uh, play another Pavarotti, but tell the story about you know, what you found Absolutely. on the streets. Yeah, so as um, uh, so this all started uh, with the Cityscapes in New York, and, and one day I was going to draw the Flatiron building um, onto one of the copper plates, and as I was walking uh, down Fifth Avenue heading to um, the Flatiron, there was a bin with a plastic um, uh, bag right next to it on the floor. And I looked down on it, and I'm always picking things up around New York and sticking them in my journal. There was a bag full of beautiful rag-papered um, envelopes. So they had uh, they looked like they were made out of that beautiful French paper that I used to print on, the Vellinage, which is mm. a French paper. Mm. And it looked like exactly the same sort of material. So I thought this would be beautiful to draw on. And it was somebody practicing their wedding invitation, you know, sort of... And as they failed, they would throw out the ones that weren't working, obviously. Mm. And I thought, these are going to be perfect. So I picked them all up and took them into the Met and did sketches over the top. And, um, uh, I'm, and of course, I'm thinking after having been to New York many times and lived there, uh, what sort of detritus was on those envelopes, you know, little yeah. little rat oh, rat droppings or something. <laughs> I, I mean, so. it's, oh, God, oh, look, it's, an aw it's awful in a way because you, you actually took them out of the bin, didn't you? Oh, I did. It's really funny because um, recently in Melbourne... Um, a, um, a, a very lovely collector of my work, um, you know, a very sophisticated woman, um, I actually was walking up towards uh, the city where we, we live and um, she actually saw me in a dumpster pulling things out of the dumpster. <laughs> This incredibly sophisticated woman, very refined, and um, and um, she was carrying Chinese food, and she looked at me and she said, "Do you need some food as well to go along with your, um, <laughs> you know, rubbish digging?" And so she was at the opening here, and she brought that up, which was not, uh, yeah, not really appropriate, but um, it was it was a lot of fun, and um, yeah. so people that know me know that I'm constantly pulling things out. In fact. You know, I've made um, a whole body of work on found objects and things that, you know, you stick together to, to tell a different story. So I kind of like the stories that are locked within a city that aren't necessarily the city itself. And New York is full of that. It's mm. a myth mythical city and, you know, full of stories and poetry and everything. And uh, and I guess um, some of the images play with the words and play with numbers. And I've sort of used templates over the top of some of the images and... Uh, um, yeah, New York's such a mythical and um, a, a place that's imagined as well as real. Mm. And I'm hoping that mm. this show kind of extends me as an artist a little bit further and allows me to delve into that part of um, image making and, um, and tell a different story. And mm. um, so, yeah, the envelopes were kind of artifacts and, and they've been framed in a way where um, they've been kind of opened up a little bit and framed like an artifact so that then as the viewer walks up to them and sees them, they're kind of hopefully a little bit of a surprise and, and, and they don't necessarily see them straight away as just straight envelopes because they're really heavily painted over and, and printed over, so I actually dry pointed over them. So put some of my images straight over, ran them through a press and then reprinted and then repainted and, uh, and then they lived on the floor of my studio and I stepped on them and they you know gathered bits of drops of paint and things like that. So mm. my studio is a bit like a birdcage where, <laughs> you know, I kind of my droppings go everywhere and then at the end hopefully you pull it out and there's an exhibition there somewhere you know you've got to then find it so um yeah so it's kind of um francis bacon's been a bit of an influence as well francis Bacon's studio where he was so full of his own um things that you he couldn't walk into his studio he had to step over things and and of course they've recreated mm. that whole studio in Ireland where they all those things were seen as artifacts so mm. an old postcard of Francis Bacon has been you know identified labeled and you know I love that idea mm. and so mm. the art, artist imbues their own history within all these layers of history oh yes well look we'll just play a few minutes of a Pavarotti and then come back to speaking to the wonderful artist Marco Lucio whose exhibition is on at the Australian Galleries in uh, Glenmore Road Paddington <laughs> 